This is hurling. Ever since I was six years old, I've been fascinated with the sport of hurling. I mean, what other sport can you catch the ball in midair with an ungloved hand, chip the ball and score a point from the sideline, and still maintain energy to score a goal despite all the resistance from your opponent, meanwhile being on the move for 70 minutes? Hurling is steeped in 3,000 years of history. It is Ireland's national sport, but Hurling is not only played in Ireland. There are teams all over the world, and more than 120 of those clubs are in the US and Canada, with new clubs popping up all over North America. I'm on a mission to highlight the Thrive and Hurling community on this side of the world. We drove 5,364 miles from Los Angeles to North Carolina and back to interview some of those clubs. This is Hurling Across the US. Before we start our journey, let's jump back to where this all began. My name is David Wogan and I grew up on the north side of Dublin. I've been playing hurling since I was a very young child. I practically grew up with a hurl in my hand. I played hurling for Whitehall Column Kill throughout my childhood, up until I emigrated from Ireland at the age of 21. Hurling is not just a hobby to me, it's my life. It has made me a stronger person both mentally and physically. It has brought me so much joy and purpose, and I want to share that same incredible experience with Americans and Canadians. After graduating from Dublin City University in 2011, I moved to Boston to be with the woman I love. I arrived in Boston with one suitcase and two hurls, determined to continue my hurling journey. I brought hurls with me everywhere I went, and one thing that kept popping up was people asking me, what is that sport? I realized that I needed to create a platform that spoke to the North American hurling community and to promote the sport to a new audience through my YouTube channel and website. To showcase that hurling is a sport for everyone, to showcase the efforts of the North American clubs who have been working tirelessly to spread the word about Hearn for decades. To showcase that you don't have to go to Ireland to watch them play Hearn. It's right on your doorstep. There are teams all over the continent who play regular matches and who will be more than happy to teach you the basics if you were to ask. When my wife suggested we drive across the USA, I knew it would be a perfect opportunity to meet fellow hurlers who love the sport just as much as I do. The mission of this documentary, just like Play Hearn's mission, is to grow the Hearn and Camogie community in North America and to help people connect through their love to sport. On this road trip, I discovered that I'm definitely not alone in my love for Hearn here. This is my journey. This is another Gaelic revival we're in the middle of right now. I found a whole new set of friends and a whole new family through, um, through hurling. It's a chaotic, beautiful dance. We've actually grown to the point now that we're looking at possibly having a second team. Hey guys, I'm Dave from PlayHurling.com and we're going to be hurling across the USA. We stopped it in and out. David's having his first in and out experience. Let's see it. Document this for the masses. Dive in there, baby boy. <laughs> oh, it's very good. You haven't lived a day until this moment. <laughs> We're having a bit of stretch in front of in and out because my legs are jelly. Good morning. We're in Saguaro Park in Arizona, and this looks like Marge Simpson right here. <laughs> Austin, Texas with Adrian from the Celtic Cowboys and we're going to talk a bit about hurling in Texas. Adrian Mannix from uh, Kilworth County Cork, play hurling, play football here with the Celtic Cowboys uh, as a forward. Actually work with Pat Dobe, he founded the club in 2004 and it's been going strong ever since. Um, we play hurling, we play football, we have two football teams so we have a few Americans playing. Uh, what Pat is actually starting right now is a kids clinic so we're getting kids involved obviously the Irish community is growing a lot in the last couple of years so their kids are actually starting to play the game now, be it they actually Americans, 10, 11 years of age, they're playing. When you go to nationals in September, there's numerous different clubs uh, from like say Indianapolis that have gone very strong, Seattle are very strong, obviously you have your Bostons and your Chicago's but just those uh, uh, non-Irish hubs so to speak are actually growing the game a lot. You can see on the jersey there, uh, as I say on the back, 
yeah, look, uh, the best crack in Texas. <laughs> so that's just something that I uh, came up with. Uh, a lot of guys just say, uh, we're called the Celtic Cowboys, obviously, as well. So um, I, I think the, the most unique thing is just that how the Irish people come together. Uh, it's a very social aspect. Um, you know, people coming over here looking for jobs, and if you just meet up through the Celtic Cowboys, um, obviously you play hurling, play football, but you know, everyone's welcome. It's just a, it's a real welcoming team, a real welcoming feel to the whole uh, club and the whole community, and uh, everyone just goes with the flow and enjoys it. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm with Clannock Gale GA Club. Hi, my name is Brian Boland. Uh, I'm treasurer with Atlanta Clannock Gale and an active member of the hurling squad and team. I moved to Atlanta four years ago, and ever since I've uh, rekindled a love for hurling. My name is Jennifer Piatto. I'm the vice chair for the board and been playing since we started our Camogie team about five years ago. I'm Jolene Glenn. I'm also with the Camogie team and I've been playing for five years. The club was founded 20 years ago, would you believe, 1996, just uh, around the Olympics time here in Atlanta. It's a great club. We've got um, upwards of 100 members and growing um, and it's really a community. It's like 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 a, a small town back home, a real family and a real community. There's a social social part of it and there's a serious part of it. Um, we have uh, clubs in both codes, so we have men's and ladies football, uh, men's hurling, and uh, by far our, our biggest and most successful team in recent years is our ladies camogies team, who won the national championships two years ago. Um, they're by far the, most, uh, the biggest and most active part, and we're very proud of them. I have a daughter who I forced to, <laughs> to try it uh, for like the first two or three practices, and then after that she was hooked. She's now in college at UCD, playing for UCD, so she's absolutely in love with it. Um, and I'm going to play until I can't play anymore, basically. It's a unique sport in the fact that the level of, of fitness and then the level of technique and skill you need is so high. You don't get that, especially in a lot of team sports. For that reason, I hope people would come try it and play. Harlan really is, is huge potential, huge potential, especially outside of Ireland and here in America. I mean, local people love it. I mean, I'd love to see it on ESPN and, and more sports channels over here, really get the broad exposure, because I think it's, it's, it's a great sport. I mean, the speed and, and scale, it really, there's no real comparative sport out there. So I think the potential, if, if, if marketed in the right way, is massive for Harlan. There's nothing else like it. If you like a challenge, I mean, if you're willing to get out there, you want to just like go full force, it's the sport for you. I mean, a mixture of field hockey and lacrosse and, and, uh, and soccer and rugby all the same, and um, really no other sport like it. And I think that's why so many uh, Americans are attracted to it. That's been a, a key recruiting is to grow, find women who are interested in doing exciting, new, challenging sports. So girls have played rugby or Aussie rules or lacrosse, lacrosse field hockey, um, hockey, ice hockey have been really great recruiting grounds. It's 4 a.m. and we arrive from North Carolina. Hey guys, I'm in UNC Chapel Hill and I'm with Raleigh GA and UNC Hurling Club and we're going to talk about hurling in North Carolina. Hey, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Sean Adrasic here from uh, Raleigh GA, uh, midfielder for, uh, for Raleigh, out here serving the United States Marine Corps at Camp Lejeune. My name is Kieran Harris and we're here the old well of UNC, representing the UNC Gaelic Athletic Association. 2012 or 13, I got the UNC club started since then. Either playing with them or managing them, I've been involved heavily. Um, we're doing fantastic, largely because of the cooperation of the, the community, the neighborhood here. So I'm also involved in Raleigh. I play with them as well. So I think the great thing about you know specifically playing here is we've got you know people from all sorts of different backgrounds, whether they be Irish, whether they not, various cultures, creeds, ethnicities. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, and that's what I've loved is that there's so much diversity. You know, being a Marine myself, it's it's a martial sport, it's the culture, it's the camaraderie. You are ready for battle, you are ready for war, and that's what I just that's what I just love about it. Nothing beats being in that match and the ashes flying and the slithers whizzing through the air and the contacts being made, ah, oh, it's unreal. Surfing, if anybody's had a chance to be part of water culture, I love surfing, I love being in the water. 
And once you've found out what it's like to be caught by the wave and to be in that spot, here you are on a surfboard moving through the water. That's the closest I can think of. Like, once you finally have the basic skills to control the ball, to, to be fluid, to be moving, and there's people moving against you, it's like you're standing up on the surfboard. It is just the heavens, they're shining down on you. It's so fun. There is something that you can find and identify in hurling that you can appreciate and love. It's been a privilege to play clubs from Virginia, from South Carolina, from uh, Montana, you know, all parts of Oregon, obviously Washington State, where I'm a native of, around North Carolina here where we're at. I, it, it is taking off. There are clubs <laughs> taking off everywhere where you wouldn't, you would like, wow, really? This place of all places, but you know, you'd be surprised. So my prediction for the next, you know, 10, 15 years is it's gonna continue to grow. And it's independent of it being an Irish thing or uh, you're from Ireland thing. It's just a great sport. And anybody who cares about sport looks at this and wants to play it, bottom line. And really, I, I think it's great, you know, what you're able to do, um, you know, David, is you're, you're documenting a lot of these clubs that are taking off. And I, that's actually something that Kieran and I have talked, and I've talked at great length with other people about it. We need, somebody needs to be documenting. This is another Gaelic revival we're in the middle of right now. And that's, that's why I think that it's important that this is this is getting documented because this is this is Irish American history at its core. It's another part of the Irish American story. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my uh, my friends from the Tacoma Rangers back at home, and uh, all my friends from the North of Ireland up in Derry and Belfast. Good morning. We're about to leave North Carolina and the next stop is Knoxville. We're gonna be driving through Tennessee today, stopping at Knoxville, Nashville, and hopefully Memphis. It's been so nice spending Christmas in North Carolina with Miranda's family. As you can see, it's kind of Irish weather today. Rain, more rain. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm with Knoxville GAC. My name is Benjamin Conaway. Name is Patrick Schauer. Uh, Seth Ingebrigtsen. Uh, about two years ago, the Army Reserve here in Knoxville, they needed some sort of alternative physical training. The coach had been over to Croke Park and said, you know, this is a Warriors game. I think we can do this. During their drill, they would spend two hours doing hurling. Uh, right now, about half of our team is uh, made up of that Army Reserve unit, and the rest is just folks who have heard about it. So I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, they had a co-ed, like, pub league up there. At the time when I started, 2003, there was eight co-ed teams, you know, playing 10 games every summer plus playoffs and stuff, so. In college, I met a couple lads from Ireland, and I got to go visit them last year, last summer, and he took me to Croke Park, and I watched a match, and kind of fell in love with it immediately. Yeah, so for me, I would also visited Ireland as a kid, um, and so I got the smallest Hurley that I could so it would fit in my luggage going home. And then I kind of just sat in my closet for about 10 years, and then one day I'm on college campus, and uh, this friend of mine says, oh, hey, this guy was talking about Irish music and Irish sports, and you have red hair, so you're probably Irish. You should go talk to him. It's literally how it happened. It's all uh, history from there. I got to play with Atlanta GAA. Um, that was a really good experience. And then when I came up here, um, I just Googled it and found them. When I'm trying to explain the sport, I say, you know, it's free flowing like basketball, maybe even more so, but you just run around and hit home runs. It's not like a batter sitting there in baseball, like, okay, they're going to pitch, I'm going to try to swing like. It's a chaotic, beautiful dance. When I'm running down the pitch, you know, bouncing the slitter out there, and I see this defender rushing at me, I'm feeling the same kind of thrill trying to figure out what I'm trying to do that someone in Ireland is experiencing right now, that someone 2,000 years ago in a field somewhere was experiencing. And so there are lots of ways to connect to a culture, the food, the music, the dance, travel, but 
it's really raw, and it's a really unique way to engage in a culture. And it is a unique sport, um, but I think America has room for unique sports. But I feel there's a market for hurling that is not nearly saturated, um, and I think we're just now starting to see the exponential growth that's going to keep on going for the next couple decades. An element I really enjoy is you know, when we go to competitions, we actually get to play like for Knoxville. I mean, I love the city, you know, I've, I've lived here for six, seven years. I was born pretty close to here. And of course, hurling has such a strong tie to geography, to where you're from with the county teams in Ireland. And to kind of take that same sentiment and, and be proud of where you're from and draw people into the community, but then to be able to represent that when you go to other cities is it's something that I kind of cherish and I think as the club grows and the, and the awareness grows that is even going to increase you know. So as someone who's out of school, just an adult, a working adult who is looking for some kind of athletics to stay in shape, something a little more um, in depth than just a two month long rec league. It's really perfect. It's an, it's open. It's not clickish. You know, we have several foot, uh, soccer clubs and we have several basketball clubs here in Knoxville, but folks have been doing that for years. And I feel like there's a lot of one upsmanship involved. So I just don't feel as it's uh, as receptive to newcomers. But when you put a hurley in someone's hand, everyone is at square one. Um, and so that fosters really open. Uh, environment where it's about learning, it's about having fun. I just see what's happened even since I started. There's clubs popping up all over, so I think it'll just continue to snowball. Like I said, I think it's the, the best game in the world, and I just got exposed to it the last year. You know, I've played a number of American sports, but because of just the inherent qualities of the game, um, but also just the rhythm of American life, I think there's the space for it, and I think. Once the awareness grows, the interest will just follow, and that's what we've seen in the short time of our club, and I think that can probably is a microcosm maybe of what can happen in a bigger way just all across America. I see it being as big as Ultimate or Lacrosse, but certainly in the next decade or two, I think the growth we've seen since 2000 or so will absolutely continue. My name is Dermot Murray. I am the current club president of the Memphis GAA Club. Hi, I'm Eric Vick. I am the director of the Memphis GAA's uh, development and recruitment. Uh, hi, my name is Joshua Foster. I'm the technical officer of the Memphis GAA. The club itself got started in January of 2015. Uh, Jesse Gammons, a graduate research assistant at the University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center, started the club. Uh, he's originally from Nashville, was very active in the club in Nashville, and decided to uh, start a club here in Memphis. Someone who uh, hasn't played hurling before should definitely join because uh, it's an interesting way to open the door to a new culture that they haven't experienced. What I think is most interesting about Memphis GAA is how we're able to really form this in a city that really hasn't heard of hurling before. I think the greatest thing about hurling in Memphis is uh, the number of people willing to give it a go. We're going to see a lot of growth in hurling across the United States, especially in cities like Memphis where people have never even heard of the sport before. I think a lot of that has been driven by uh, especially the, the growth of millennials who are really open to new experiences and trying out new things, a lot more than us Gen Xers are, I'm afraid. So I think it's a very exciting time for this sport in the United States. Good morning, we're in Clinton, Oklahoma, and we drove through tonight and I'm refueling with some more coffee. We just arrived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've been on the road for about 28 hours and covered 1,700 miles, so we're absolutely exhausted, so we just checked into this motel.
Hey guys, I'm with John from the Tampa Bay Hurdle Club and we're going to talk about hurdling in Florida. I'm John Denovi. I'm the club secretary for the Tampa Bay Hurdling Club from Tampa Bay, Florida. Well, our club in Tampa, we're, we're, we're primarily guys, but we do have a few girls that uh, definitely show us how to play the game. We've got some camogie stars from over in Ireland that have come over and have done such a great job of uh, encouraging us and giving us uh, the skills that they know. And it's, it's made camogie fans of all the guys. Uh, we're, we're really supportive and we're always looking for, for more girls to join. And uh, I would encourage anyone who, who, who wants to get out and play is that anybody can do it, regard, regardless of your age or your ability level. And men, women, children, everyone, and, and even families. We've got, we've got fathers that play with their sons and, and moms play with their daughters. And I think it's just a great, great way to spend a Sunday. What really has attracted me to it is, is the tie to the culture of Ireland. And I'm not Irish. I, but I've, I, I kind of now identify as Irish. I've got so many friends from all over Ireland and all over the United States that I've met through the game of hurling and that we can share that common, that common link, that common bond. Um, so I, I think that's really one of the cool things about hurling is that not only are you, you picking up a new sport and something you love to do, but you're also, you get to learn about a culture and you're helping preserve um, a 3,000 year old uh, sport which is a pretty cool responsibility for all of us to have. I think the future hurling in America, I, th I think it's, it's got huge, huge potential. I think just the key is to get a hurley into someone's hand and once they get that chance to try it, they pick up a few of the basic skills, um, they're gonna be hooked. And then the social aspect and the, f the f feeling part of a team and being a part of the Irish culture in the crack is gonna make you wanna come back again and again and again. And I found that Everybody I've dealt with in America that has played hurling is just everyone's got a great story to tell. Everyone's got uh, you know something to share with one another, and it's it's just been an incredible experience in just just a short year that I've been playing. And so I think in 10 years from now, I think hurling will continue to grow. I think that more and more kids are going to get access to it. Um, I think that's going to be a big part of the growth of the sport. I think colleges will continue to play it on campus. Uh, I think that's going to give a lot of um, uh, exposure. And then through social media and, and through things like playhurling.com, the ability to get it out in front of people and for people to see it and, uh, and then to get out and try it. And that's key. And that's what we're going to really devote our, our season to this year is we grow our team in Tampa is we're going to try and put Hurleys in as many people's hands as we can, regardless of whether they have any background in, from Ireland or not. Uh, we just want people to try it and kind of play the percentage game. If we can get a thousand people to pick up a hurl and puck around, we might get a few of them to stick around and play with us. I found a whole new set of friends and a whole new family through, um, through hurling. <music>I thought I'd end off this video with my story. So we're in Santa Monica, we've started a meetup group. The people that are here today and uh, have been for the past two weeks are made up of the Gaelic football team for Los Angeles and people that actually found the Play Hurling YouTube channel, which I was delighted about. My name is Spencer Bing, I play uh, Gaelic football with the Culver City Cougars. I've always wanted to try it, so we tried, decided to try to get some people together and uh, David and uh, Play Hurling uh, have organized this great, uh, great space. My name is Flynn Lemonye and uh, I play forward. When I first started playing, I'm pretty sure I liked every hurling page on Facebook. Ended up finding out that there was a club in San Diego, which is about an hour and a half, two hours south. Uh, so I've been driving down every weekend playing with them and then uh, discovered there was a team or a group coming up in uh, Santa Monica, so started kind of hitting with them, so now I'm hitting with two groups up in California. Hi, my name is Bill Jennings and I usually play full forward. I think the hurling community as a whole, um, at least everybody I've ever met that's ever played the sport or, or enjoys the sport has been fantastic and they've been a, a great group of uh, you know men and women. So. Um, I'm very excited to, to find some folks out here in Los Angeles to play with. I came to this country playing hurling. I started playing when I was six or seven at home. I came to America playing hurling. The standard to me was unbelievable when I came here. And without hurling being in America, I would not have stayed. And we came to, I came to California here in 1978 and we formed the Wild Geese Football and Hurling Club and I've been here. It's the greatest game in the world, the fastest game in the world, the most intense game in the world. Everyone should play hurling. That's beautiful. Hell yeah. That's perfect. Is that okay? <laughs> so I first discovered hurling when I was nine. I uh, took a trip to Dublin with my family and my godmother who lives in Ireland, uh, her brother was coaching uh, what would be the equivalent of like a high school team. And I was nine and I was fascinated. I took it back to the US. Then I discovered it again in college. Um, I saw flyers for a hurling club at Purdue University. And 
kind of went from there. My first exposure to hurling was actually back in 2001 when I was visiting Ireland. Uh, I'd heard of the, the game before, um, but I'd never seen it played, so I didn't know much about it. So if you want to fast forward 10 years later, I'd actually ended up in Indianapolis for work, and I happened to catch a sign at a actually Good Earth uh, Whole Food store in Indianapolis, and they had a little hurling section. And so they had a business card there that said, if you're interested in playing, come on out to Broad Ripple Park on Wednesdays and check it out. So I did, and I've been playing ever since. So that's been about five years now. I had an internship in Korea, and I was looking for a soccer team to play with, but I, what I found was the Seoul Gales, and it's a Gaelic football club. Uh, at one of the tournaments, uh, I saw some guys hitting around with the hurls. That's the first time I ever saw it. These sessions on the beach uh, two weeks ago was the first time I've actually ever played hurling. People should definitely play hurling because it, it takes something from every sport. No matter what you play, you can, you can and translate some aspect of the game over uh, and it's just a great culture and, and, and you meet a lot of really great people and some great friends. All of us have the similar story that we wanted to play hurling with someone. We've had tons of people just walk up on, on the side of the beach and ask like you know what are you playing and we've actually introduced a couple players um, and actually had one come out to our training this week uh, who happened to walk, come across this last week so you know there's always new people coming in new faces we're in Santa Monica the beach is just right there there's palm trees there's Americans playing her and there's Irish people playing her and it's just like I feel like I'm living my life to my full potential and I think that it's definitely gonna grow as more people understand what it is and discover it I think uh, it's gonna become a great spectator sport in the future so I think curling has a great future in America I would like to see it become as popular here in, the, in America as as it is back in Ireland. I definitely think hurling is going to be growing in the next 10 years. At least at the college level, it, it goes so well with the college atmosphere, with I mean, kind of the camaraderie and uh, you know people liking to have fun. But I think it's it's really going to pick up and people are going to start hearing of it more. And maybe in the U.S., when I say I play hurling, I won't have so many blank stares. So we're 12 weeks later from doing our initial recording, and I wanted to actually give an update on the LA team and the OC. So we combined a team from. Some of the Gaelic footballers from the Wild Geese in the OC and then our play Hearn crowds in LA. And we are true to the semi-finals. We're on Sunday morning uh, and we've done excellent. We have a very strong team. It's our first time playing together as a team. Yes, we train together, but it, it just it's our first tournament and to get through to the semi-finals, we're only a couple of weeks old. And even if at that, we're kind of still in the, the pre-club stage. We're playing for the uh, Wild Geese, but St. Patrick's LA used to be a club uh, and it disbanded a couple of years ago, but they're a green jersey and that's what we've been wearing for this, uh, for this tournament. And it's nice to see that Hurden is regrown in the LA area. Like if you look back on the history, it was like in and out so many times that people were because I think like the first exposure to it was 1917. There was a Komoki team, and then like throughout the the 80s and 90s were very strong. That we're able to regrow it and to recruit more people because there definitely is a demand for it. We've been dominating every single game, and it's very strong growth, very strong potential that the future is going to have for Harden and DOC in LA. Let's not throw me Wow!